Good afternoon. This is Tammy Tolinar with Lele North America, and welcome to another edition of our Coffee Talk. Today we have Kayla rushing with us from Dairy Lane Farms in Oregon. We're excited to have Kayla with us today to have her talk about her daily barn routines that she works with on the farm, talk about um, the technology that she's using through the robots on the farm and how she helps that to improve her reproductive performance. So good afternoon, Kayla. Good afternoon. It's, I'm glad to be here. <laughs> Yeah, glad to have you here today. It's probably been about a year since I've seen you out in the area. So this is how this is how we get to meet now for a while. So tell me, Kayla, oh, yeah. um, when, when I met you about a year ago, you were just getting started using the robots there at Dairy Lane Farm. Tell me a little bit about your daily routine. So twice a day, we fetch cows in the barns. Um, that includes new heifers that are being trained. Um, after that in the mornings, we do a lot of breedings as well as in the afternoons. Um, one of our barns, we're lucky enough to have a separation pin. Um, that kind of pin gives us a little more freedom to get that exact breeding just right. Uh, as the other barn, we kind of have to wait for Juno to come by so they lock up a little better. Um, I also use T4C to kind of stay updated on the health of the cows. Um, go find those cows um, whose activity graph just isn't quite right and what, whatever else happens to come up in the day. Okay, so um, you're sending the robot to sort automatically from uh, with the reproductive information and also for your health report? Uh, just for the reproduction. So for breeding, we'll have cows constantly coming into the pen. We can breed them and send them out, um, which is really useful and saves a lot of time from having to go hunt down that cow in the barn. No, that's good. So what other, um, what other things have you learned that helps um, with your daily routines to kind of keep you on track? Do you print a list and take it with you? Or are you using the handheld device? Uh, yeah, I use my phone a lot to help me find cows in the barn, especially in the mornings, those cows that, you know, didn't do their homework and I need to go find or they're getting close to drying up. So they just kind of want to lay down. I don't want to get up and get moving with their day. They'd rather go eat. I use that kind of as a checkoff list. Um, it helps too when finding heat cows. I use that heat and insemination tab um, and go find them if I need to. If they aren't sorted yet. Um, those are really useful. Now, what about some of those tasks that maybe we do only once a week or once a month, like vaccinations or dry offs? How do you manage that throughout the week? Uh, so we have a dry off day. Um, it's usually like a Saturday or a Sunday. Um, depending on the time of year and what's going on in the fields. And um, for dry off, one of our barns, we're able to separate our dry cows out. So they're there, you know, Saturday morning, I just have to push them through the robots and treat them. Um, the other barn, I have to put them into the fetch pen. We don't have a separation pen, hopefully, maybe one day. <laughs> and um, then we are able to have them all there in one spot. And then we move them across to our dry cow pen. Now, what about um, training heifers there at the farm? I know a lot of our robot users are trying different ways, pre-training and so forth. What have you found that's worked successful for you on the farm with training heifers? Well, we fetch them twice a day, which I've, from what I've heard, some people do it three times. It kind of just depends on, I guess, you know, what works for your farm. Um, we've been pretty lucky in that most of our heifers figure it out within about two weeks. Um, some are less, some are more. Um, one thing I've noticed that's really helped is when I first started helping with the heifers, um, they were all bull covered. Um, and then we started using AI on them and they got more human, you know, more interaction with me being out there every day and just being around a person made them calm down a bit. Um, and as I got further along, they started feeding the pellets that they get in the robots to the calves. And that when that group came through to the robots, they already knew what the pellets were and were really excited about it. So they were more willing to put their, you know, head in and get their pellets than look around. <laughs> yeah. So any kind of pre-training um, with the pellet and so forth prior to the robot is probably helping you then. Yes. Yeah. There was a noticeable change because I didn't realize that it happened. And then I kind of thought more about it. I'm like, oh, yeah, that was a feed change there from just the, you know, the hutches and it made the difference. Yeah, no, that's great. 
Now, what about robot maintenance? Are you doing the daily robot maintenance as well? And how do you fit that into your schedule? Uh, I, I usually do some weekly maintenance as I'm, I'm in the robot rooms every day. So I kind of try to do a visual inspection when I hose down. Um, but the, you know, once a week I like to go through and I clean out bleed holes, do any kind of preventative stuff I could see, you know, if a twin tube cover is starting to break or a screw came out, get that replaced. Um, little things we've noticed with, you know, preventing deviations, trying to prevent those from happening and cleaning out those little areas, those little crevices. Um, I kind of just do those, do those weekly and that seemed to help and doing liner changers at, you know, at the, you know, the correct milking number when the attention pops up to stay on top of those. So it sounds like it's really became a routine for you to keep up with yeah. robots and all of your daily tasks. Yeah. What other tips would you give for um, other or new robot users when they're starting to develop their routines? Uh, I think just try to stick to it. Even, you know, you're going to have those days where you get really busy and you don't want to go clean bleed holes. But as long as you stay on top of it, it's going to save you, save you or someone else the phone call later. Um, and just kind of the more I've been around them, the more I've realized like, oh, if this starts to happen, I need to go check this and just being able to develop those patterns. And like, oh, a cup slipping. Oh, maybe my chain's too long or my chain's too short. Or <laughs> kind of just realizing, oh, this robot has this many failures on just that cup. What's wrong with it? No, that sounds great. Now, a couple of other things I wanted to ask you about is kind of in regards to the technology that you're utilizing with the robots. Um, one of the items that I saw as an addition to robots was the in for use um, pails and the in for use system. Tell us a little bit about how you're utilizing in for use on the farm. Yeah, so we've been able to utilize that the last three months we've had them in. Um, before we would kind of just look at cows and be like, I think that's a high cell count cow but I'm not really sure. So you'd bucket a few of them and put them in, you know, use that milk for calf milk. Um, and we were still not down to what we wanted to be. Um, since the somatic cell counters have went in, we've dropped like 15,000 somatic cell counts by just bucketing those cows we know now are the high cell count cows. Um, and that's kind of been relieving, especially, you know, you're only bucketing a few cows, you know, they're, they're your problem cows, um, but nice. <laughs> Yeah, so you're utilizing the MQCC information to identify cows that then you can put through to the M for use to capture that milk. Are you doing um, every cow once a day, every day? How are you having that done? Um, well, it's, uh, it's on the SMART program. So I believe it's every three milkings. Um, they're getting uh, tested unless they're kind of flagged as a potential high one, then they're getting uh, tested more regularly. Um, and that's been a world of difference, especially in those fresh cows who their cell counts are really high after calving. You know, you can put them in, you know, you keep their colostrum in the bucket and then you can keep them out for an extra couple of days for that cell count to go down and pays off overall. So you're capturing the colostrum as well then in the M for use pails. And yes. then are you, are you pasturing that separate? Yes, we have a, some bags we're able to put in the water bath and pasteurize. No, that's great. Um, one of the other things I know that, of course, we need for our robots is our, um, our neck collars or our tags that we're using on the animals. So one of the things I know that um, you've been successful with is improving reproduction um, using some of the data that's being captured. Tell us a little bit about what you've been able to do. It's been pretty great. We're able to breed at that optimal time in between, you know, that green little space in there. Um, and that's kind of made a world difference because you're not just saying, oh, you know, so-and-so saw so-and-so writing um, and then guessing, you know, what time that really was at or, you know, doing tail chalk twice a day. It's saving you the time. It's been pretty great. I think our conception rates around two, like servings per conception, um, which is, you know, pretty great. Most of our cows have at least been bred by before 90 days in milk, I believe. And I think, I mean, that's pretty great. I haven't worked on a lot of other farms, but... <laughs> It seems pretty successful to me. We're not giving a lot of, um, we're not doing any, you know, we're not giving a lot of shots, um, which has been really nice. Occasionally we'll go out and find those cows that we haven't bred yet that are, you know, however many days out, and we, you know, try to get them started with a shot of loot. Um, 
but we're really not chasing cows to get them bred. We don't have any, you know, programs, sink programs set up because we haven't needed it. It catches them. Wow. That's great that you've been able to utilize that um, technology to help with your reproduction and two services per conception on cows is great. And uh, I saw that your pregnant heifer barn was full too. So obviously it's being um, successful technology there on the farm. So um, tell me uh, a little bit more than about um, how you've also um, used the tags for health um, information on the cows with the robots? Uh, yeah, I'm able to kind of look at our health report in the mornings and I can, first thing when I get there, I can kind of see those problem cows or cows I need to, you know, for sure get eyes on. Um, sometimes, you know, it's just, you know, collar broke off and no big deal, put a new collar on. Other times, you know, you want to get out there and, you know, give them that bottle of calcium or whatever they need or see well, why is this cow not getting up? Oh, you know, they need, you know, they're limping, you know, got to go put them in the separation pen so they don't, it's a little, you know, a little easier on them. <laughs> yeah, it seems like a lot of data that's captured there um, through the robot, through the tag system to make better management decisions. Absolutely. So what's one area that you're working on or trying to still improve um, in your robot efforts? Oh, I feel like there's room for improvement everywhere. <laughs> 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 it's a constant learning process and it's been really great, a great experience. And I always look forward to what the new thing is that we're going to get or what else I can learn about um, through them and how I can utilize it better. No, that's great. I'm glad to hear it. So I really appreciate you spending the time with me today here, Kayla, and telling us about what you've learned through robots in your short time using them. And now you've helped to um, utilize that technology there with the tags, with the tools through the robots, and such as the MQCC and um, the M for use, as well as how you've modified and implemented your daily routines there with the robot. So I appreciate your time and I thank everyone for um, listening to us today on the Lele Coffee Talk series. Thank you. Thank you.